And Sam McClure is with us tonight because, Sam, we have got a legitimate big football story. You broke it today in The Age. Congratulations on that. And it is a good, legitimate football story, the one that breaks our heart, and it is our great mate, Buddy Franklin. Yeah, it certainly is. And there are fears around the Sydney Swans tonight, Eddie, that he has sustained a significant hamstring injury. It was at training today. Now, he's not going to have scans until tomorrow. He was midway through a running drill where he pulled up um, in a lot of pain. Um, there were a lot of teammates around him that saw him. He took quite some time to actually limp off the ground. And there are fears that it is more than just a casual four-week hamstring injury. Now, he sustained two hamstrings last year that saw him miss more than 10 weeks of footy. Mm. It's actually the other ha hamstring. It's on his right-hand side, which is the same side of his leg that he had knee surgery on, Eddie, in January. Now, there is some more background to this that I've been able to uncover in the last few hours. Buddy Franklin actually had hamstring soreness on the first session back. Now, this is Monday last week, so nine days ago. He told the club, I'm told he had a scan. I put that caro to Charlie Gardner, the head of footy, um, a few moments ago. He was unwilling to comment on that. He then didn't train on the Wednesday. They tried to ease him back into training Friday Monday just gone and then really tried to step things up today and that's when he sustained the injury. It's, um, it, it's a fascinating turn of events and obviously as a 33-year-old there's going to be fears over his longevity. Dr Peter Larkins spoke to that a short time ago. So this is the same knee that he had the surgery on this year so already there's going to be potentially some biomechanical or gait related issues. So he's got the two negatives going against him, his age. He's had a hamstring history, but more importantly, it was on the other side that he's had hamstring injuries over the last 12 months rather than this right side. But the right side is the knee side. So there's probably a link even now, even though it's some time since his knee surgery, there's still a link with the way the leg is recovering and it makes you more prone for an injury on that same side. Dr Peter Larkins here. Looks like he's been in Tony Cochran's uh, wardrobe. Uh, we'll be talking to the Gold <laughs> Coast president a little bit later on there. Sam, uh, off the back of what Pete's got to say there, what, what does that mean for Buddy realising that we've got a 17-week season? Yeah, well, I mean, hopefully, Eddie, the scans are not as, as bad as yeah. we fear and that it's only a four-week hamstring and we can see him come back. But, Ross and Lloydie, this isn't the first time we've seen Buddy with hamstring issues. You only have to go through um, last year, round 14, it was the second time he did it against the Hawks. Now, you guys might remember this is the game that he actually spent eight minutes on the bench. He was trying to get back onto the ground. Um, he cooled down and then went straight back on and tore it. They won that game. He was only meant to miss another four weeks. He was waiting to play his 300th game for the best part of two and a half months. He only played one more game uh, that year, which was round 23. We haven't seen him since. It's amazing how durable you can be for so long. Buddy hardly missed a game for 14 years. Mm. And then from that point last year, he just can't take a trick. So I think you start chasing your tail at times. He's just playing catch-up continually, Buddy Franklin. And as a result, you can bring on other injuries, Ross. If you have a hamstring injury, the, the risk increases that you will have a repeat hamstring injury. And then if you have a knee injury, then your strength in that hamstring becomes an issue. So they're biomechanical. But it just highlights for everything spent in soft cap, sports science, medical, the injury, the occurrence of hamstrings hasn't been decreased at all. So it's a tragedy. If you're John Longmore and you're laying in bed and you're thinking, who can't go down? You don't want Buddy to go down. And if it's a tendon... If it's a significant tendon injury where they've got to repair the tendon, that's 12 weeks minimum. It will almost be the season. Why would the head of football refuse to comment on the fact that Buddy Franklin had had a scan after day one of training? Well, it's not logical to be truthful. They scan colds now. He, I guarantee you he went and had a scan. And then whoever interpreted that scan, they're going to be under the most pressure, I would think. But you're only as good as the feedback from the player. So he's missed. He's a leader. He would have been saying, I'm right to go. Now, if he hasn't fed accurate information, that can then lead because he's pushed it more than he should have to. Boydie, uh, he is an out-and-out -out champion. He is the draw card of the Sydney Swans. You can understand him trying to push. He's heading towards 1,000 goals as well. And yeah. I know you've been having a good look at that. Yeah, I think Eddie will be the last player ever to achieve it. So, you just see Lance Franklin there, seventh on the all-time goal-kicking list. And I think, oh, I just cannot wait to see him get back. And I hope he can get back to achieve it. But... Yeah, you know, there's no guarantee. He was flying towards it, and now just injuries keep hitting him. I think he's a great trainer, yeah. but as you get older and you have these, it's going to become attention to detail and strict rehabilitation. Yeah. I think that's going to be the challenge for Lance because he's probably the greatest athlete that's played the game. And Ross, what about how explosively he plays the game too? That makes it. Even yeah, he's not a big contested no. mark. He's split power, get goal side, and you can't catch him. So. Lance is going to have to have a look at his prep and just modify himself a little bit and trust the conditioners. 
Uh, Caro and Sam, he's got three years left on his celebrated contract. How does that... I mean, every time he gets an ingrown toenail, everyone talks about his contract. Yep. And uh, there's no doubt he has been sensational for the Sydney Swans. Where does this sit in uh, the whole thinking of things? All-Australian captain just um, 18 months ago. Look, I mean, it's difficult to see if this keeps happening, him getting to the end of that three years. And Sydney could justifiably argue that he's done his bit already in terms of numbers, interest in the club. They've made two grand finals with him there. It does make it interesting now, Caro, because when they did this deal, they had to swear in stone that there would be no discount going forward. Yep. The salary cap's coming down. There's going to be three years of a big contract still there. It's going to be a massive problem for them. I mean, they would say they were unfairly penalised by the AFL by being banned from trading, and I actually agree with them about that. But I, I do think... That, and obviously, it, what was, it didn't go up when the CBA went up. So it won't be as damaging as it could have been. They've got a great... They've got a plethora of really good young players. But this will be the, dare I say, the hamstring for the Sydney Swans. Uh, do you think, and I'll throw this open to anyone, that given the changes that have come, it's almost a force majeure, if you like, no-one's at blame for this. Should the AFL, in looking at these situations, cut some slack for players who might have been on big contracts who can't finish those contracts? Well, I wrote about this about the coaches on Saturday. They're looking at doing the same thing for the clubs and coaches and looking at each deal on a case-by-case -case basis. Sydney have been punished threefold for recruiting Buddy, haven't they? They lost their cost of living allowance. They were banned from trading. If they said no to... And I don't think the AFL will be giving them too much sympathy, I've got to say, about Buddy Franklin, but I think they might have to look at these cases with a lot of players on long-term deals. But I think it was Andrew Island's strategy. He, he was the brains, and the strategy was, we'll pay him, but we know the salary cap's going up exponentially over yeah. the next 10 years, and as a percentage of the salary cap... In the end, it won't be that much. Yep, it's not so, nearly as bad So you now can't have your cake and eat it too. That... If you take that risk, well, you've got to suffer the consequences now, even though it's unforeseen. It, it